This morning on The Dish, Chef Michael Stoltzfus, his Coquette may not be the best known restaurant in New Orleans, but it is one of the most loved, frequently showing up on lists of the city's top venues and earning Stoltzfus six nominations for the James Beard Award. And its secret ingredient may be the chef's pursuit of the best local ingredients. Jamie Wax dropped by for a taste. So here we are in Lafitte, Louisiana, moss-covered oaks, the bayou right there. About 30 minutes south of New Orleans on Bayou Barataria at Higgins Seafood. Now it's just nice to get out of the city and kind of take this in and, you know, see where our product's coming from. You can uh, regularly find yeah, Chef Michael cool. Stoltzfus, Maryland-born but Louisiana-adopted, sourcing local. This is where you get the real stuff. Yes. This is the only place we get our crab meat. It's head and shoulders above anything else. We have to drive down here to get it once a week. It's stunning. Family run uh -huh. and right off the bayou. Uh -huh. One of the things I love about a Maryland chef coming to New Orleans is that crab is always on the menu. <laughs> uh -huh. Always. <laughs> and the place that crab meat and an array of other local ingredients will end up is on the menu of what is both an institution and a best kept secret to many, his Crescent City restaurant, Coquette. There were at least three failed restaurants on this corner of Magazine Street in New Orleans before you came in, took a look at it. How did you decide to go ahead and take that leap? A lot of sleepless nights. I was a baby, I was 25 years old when this was going on, and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even know what kind of food we were gonna cook. It took me years to really figure out what my voice was here. You wanna grab another plate, wash and replate it really quickly? Over 15 years, his voice has become loud and clear to locals and savvy travelers. It's the unmistakable sound of authenticity. So we want people to know when they're eating in this restaurant that you are in New Orleans, that you are in South Louisiana. And you know, sometimes that's an ingredient. Other times it's a story behind the dish, you know, kind of how it came about. And then other times it's techniques and sometimes it's just a feeling like it should feel like food needs to have a sense of place, I feel like, to, to feel good. And that's what we really try to do. Stoltzfus comes by his sense of place, honestly, with deep roots in Maryland farm life. His dad was a dairy farmer and his mom owned a bakery. I was about to go to college and she's like, you want to come work for a couple weeks? And never went to college and stayed at the bakery and helped her in the kitchen side of it. It was myself, my mom and my sister. None of us had ever worked in a restaurant or, or a bakery. We had no idea what we were doing. And I think it showed, like the food was good, it was fine. My sister worked the front of the house. I did the kitchen and my mom ran the, uh, the bakery side of it. And it was fun, like we, we figured it out as we went. That started him on a journey bypassing culinary school, a choice that would end up launching his career. For whatever reason, whether it was, you know, growing up with food or whatever, it just really captivated me. And I think being able to work with your hands, like I always, on the farm growing up, like there was lots of woodworking and doing things that were very analog. And so this kind of followed suit was, you know, cooking and doing this and yeah, just, just fell in love with it. That's how I ended up in New Orleans. This is the fritter replacement, Gougeres with, uh, Fresh cheese and pickle squash. And New Orleans has embraced him for dishes like smoked Gulf cobia with cucumber and spruce. So we cure this with a little coffee and then kind of a nod to the specific Northwest ideas. It's just a fun dish. And while, you know, it's coffee and spruce and cucumber and dill, not classic, it tastes pretty familiar and classic, I think. Just the smell of it alone is like heaven. A one of a kind bread service with roasted heirloom tomato and a dashi aioli with olive oil charred green cabbage topped with smoked trout roe dill and lemon. But this is one of my favorite ones. It's just really simple. It's roasted cabbage that we then cut in half and grill until it's nice and charred. We cut it in strips. Everything I love about like adding smokiness to cabbage is there. It's just, it's just lighter and it, and it feels new. It yeah. feels like someone who understands global cuisine trying to make something local informed. Does that make sense? I'll take that, yeah, absolutely. Chilled sweet corn soup with that Higgins crab meat and tomato jam, a dish that brings him back to his childhood. I never cooked when I was younger, but we had really great food memories that I didn't realize. My mom would walk out the back door and 20 feet from uh, the back porch would grab corn off the cob and take it in and shuck it and boil it. And that was our you know, corn on the cob, which I took for granted. Like I thought all corn tasted amazing. Spectacular, an incredible summer soup. Amazing, amazing. Also on the table, South Louisiana seafood stew, made with crab, shrimp, and saffron, served with rice fritters. 
long grain rice with crab, jalapeno, and popcorn. It's rice that's just cooked with a little bit of butter. We had crab meat, we had a little bit of cumin. On top of that is chopped popcorn, and then there's a powder made from jalapeno oil on top. I mean, I can't tell where the rice begins. <laughs> the crab meat starts and the popcorn uh, takes over, uh, but then there's the jalapeno at the end. Mm -hmm. That is really special. That is a very unique dish. It is. And smoked beef short rib with puffed rice and cilantro. If you eat first with your eyes, like they say, <laughs> this is gorgeous. It's smoky, it's rich. It's so unbelievably tender. And for dessert, a chocolate tart. Half of the joy of eating is the surprise as things arrive, you know, and whether that's the actual dish, the surprise of it, or the surprise of flavors within that dish, that's, that's what makes it fun. And many others obviously like to eat that way too. At Coquette and at Lengua Madre, a five-course tasting menu specializing in Mexican cuisine that he developed with his former sous chef, Ana Castro. I think a lot of people would eat there if you remove, you know, the masa from some of it. It's not that Mexican. And, you know, that's the, the point. It's not just about Mexican food. It's about Ana's story. And so it's very personal, and it's really been a, a pleasure to, like, be a part of and, and watch it happen. And while the pandemic allowed him the vision to create that new venture, it also allowed him the perspective to appreciate the one he'd created over a decade ago. Like, I love being in the kitchen. I love, you know, coming up with these dishes. And while it's not the best hours and I have a seven-month-old son at home, like... Uh, who's that? Who's that? Hi. It's not <laughs> ideal always. This brings me so much joy. Well, here's to the next 15 years. Cheers. I'll be at the corner of the bar. <laughs> For CBS Saturday Morning, Jamie Wax, New Orleans.